a certain way, who am I to tell anybody else? It takes a pretty open mind to think like that, though, right? Oh, no, people are wedded to that idea. There's no way. Sacrilegious. How could you say that? Right? So then they defend it. They defend it. They defend it. They defend it. But the existence of someone saying that, listen, I am neither going to say that it's just or unjust. I see the truth in existence, that the act itself is an act. And I recognize that as far as the appropriation of value, I'll leave that to you to do. But I'm going to exist my life and live my life in full recognition that there is no inherent moral phenomena. Thus, I become the immoralist, right? That's truly at the deepest level. That is what the immoralist does. That is a recognition that the immoralist makes, right? So Nietzsche says, a single individual contains within him a vast confusion of contradictory valuations and consequently of contradictory vibe, drives. I was programmed this way. I, I want to make this assessment. I don't know what to do. The individual becomes jaded because of this. This, this structure, I don't want to get too deep, right? Because <laughs> you could be a bad person if you really understood this. And I'm not going to lecture on that, but I do understand it. Um, the person can just, the person can be totally confused. You can really get into someone's head bad, in a bad way, right? If you really know what you're doing, if you know how to manipulate people, right? You can get into someone's head bad, in a bad way, and just sort of, sort of tease out that contradiction, because we all have it there. What Nietzsche says is, when you get to the expert level, you recognize that there really isn't a contradiction. Because that moral phenomenon doesn't begin and it doesn't exist in the first place. That contradiction, that tension, arises as a consequence of the belief in that moral phenomenon. But once you get to the level of recognizing that there wasn't any moral phenomenon to begin with, you truly can sort of begin, really, this is ground starting point one, you can truly begin to live your life as a moralist. Um, until that point, you are wedded terribly to a system of beliefs, fill in the blank. And it doesn't just have to be a religious system of belief, right? Any ideological system of belief that tells you that a particular state of affairs, a particular act has a value in and of itself, independent to perception, is lying to you, according to Nietzsche. And it, it's up to you to recognize that, no, the system creates the value and then applies it. It's okay that you think it's bad. Just recognize that it's not the act in and of itself that's bad. It's just your system that has placed that judgment on the thing. Right? So, whew, super deep. Contradictory dives. This contradictory creature has in his nature, however, a great method of acquiring knowledge. He feels many pros and cons. He raises himself to justice. The wisest man would be the richest in contradictions. Right? To really make sense of that, to arrive at a state where I recognize, it's not that you actually embrace, he's not saying that would be a misinterpretation of Nietzsche. It's not that the wisest man believes, because that would be a contradiction, right? You believe that an act is both just and unjust at the same time. He's not saying that. That wouldn't make any sense. What he's saying is, I understand, Jason Campbell, understand that for the, I hate to use the word the masses, but for the masses, the act of having... Um, sexual relations outside of wedlock is a taboo. It's a huge taboo. Despite the fact that, you know, a vast majority of marriages end because of that taboo. Rather than recognizing that it is just an act of sexual intercourse and nothing more, nothing more. Now, if you want to talk about falling in love with the person and all that other stuff, then you can say, well, that would be problematic, the falling in love part. But there isn't some external source of evaluation that is already imbued in the act of having sex outside of marriage. It's just the act of having sex outside of marriage. That's all that it is, right, as an example. The belief, however, that that act in and of itself, sort of a priori in this Kantian sense, is in some sense the base, according to Nietzsche, is to totally fail to understand the process. The process philosophy, the process, is a process of standing above the contradiction. So I can embrace all views. Yeah, I can see how you think that that's okay. 
And I can also see how you think that that's not okay. And it doesn't bother me either way. Some people are going to think that it's a soft, it's, it's sophistry in its most beautiful sense. I'm not wedded to anything. I'm a, I really am a methodological skeptic. I mean, that's what, how I classify myself philosophically. I'm not wedded to any position. I don't believe in any definitive point. Everything's up for negotiation at all times, um, including the I. <laughs> including the I, right? So I'm not wedded even to myself. That's philosophically, that it's the most contradictory position, right? It's the most, dude, that Dr. Campbell, he's, <laughs> he's on another level. What is he talking about? I don't even know. I mean, I do know, but I don't want you to know that I know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough of that. Last point, A. Um, so, sorry for a very bizarre, heady lecture today. This is, I went a little off the deep end. Um, argument two, morality then is... A system of, de now this is a combination of all the points, right? This is a, I, I think this is a, a, a very, not to toot my own horn, but I think this is a very sort of systematic, I think it's a beautiful reduction, right? Morality is, a combination of many points, a system of definite perspectives. Morality is a system of definite perspectives and contradictory valuations. Right? Definite perspectives and contradictory valuations, right, valuations, definite perspectives and contradictory valuations that partially coincide with the condition of a creature's will to power. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. But that should make sense, right? And just to end, not on a super deep note, just so that everybody can digest this, to end on a very simple note, the process of morality is a process of evaluation, of making interpretations, of making prescriptions, what you ought, what you should, what you must. And that corresponds with, it correlates with my will to power. My will is telling me I'm directed in this way. And morality is outside watching the process. It's sort of a, a voyeur. Morality is just watching me. But I know that morality is watching me, and I don't mind morality watching me because I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, an exhibitionist. So I let morality watch me, and morality watches. And then morality tries to make a judgment on what it is that I'm doing. And I know, as a good moralist, that morality is watching me. And that morality is going to try and regulate my will. And it's precisely at the moment that it makes its judgment that I turn back and I gaze at morality. And I, and I look it in the face. And I tell morality that there is no moral phenomenon. What you're telling me that I need to stop doing, I don't need to stop doing. And I won't stop doing. Because I am in the process of actualizing my being. I've already made the decision. It's not about making the decision. It's about me understanding why I made the decision. Insofar as I understand why I made the decision, now morality needs to continue to watch. Because I'm not going to change. Right? If I subordinate that will to morality, then the sirens take me off the course. But no amount of beautiful women are going to engage me into the forest or into the ocean. And no amount of external moral valuation is going to confuse me to have me believe that there is such a thing as moral phenomena. Because I don't believe that. And with that, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.